I want to introduce you with our next guest. Um, her name is Sana uh, Bangishti. She is really um, an exciting uh, woman I have ever seen in my life. I know her since like um, a couple of years. We first met in AmCham, American Chamber of Abu Dhabi. She is a great influential lady in UAE and the Gulf region. She started her career from the Gulf News and um, she uh, has uh, great achievement she is a unique blend of talent she is uh, uh, she is an a mix of academic like the professors in universities and a practical leading ceo for the top companies uh, she is really really dynamic woman i can um, after owning 14 companies across the globe, running a big portfolio, I can endorse as a group CEO that I have seen very less women like this in my whole life. So I would like to invite her to share her thoughts with the young women and the women who really want to come in UAE and want to you uh, want to do businesses, want to do a job. So now I'm going to hand over the mic to this amazing woman. Please go ahead. Uh, Musa, you are just too kind, I have to say. Thank you so much for an amazing introduction. Uh, good morning from Seattle, Washington. Uh, we're here after a few days of, uh, uh, as you might have heard, there was a bit of smoke here. So we, it's a clear day and full of promise. And I'm glad to be talking to all of you this morning. Uh, so, uh, Musa, thank you. And thank you, amazing ladies who are all joining us today. Uh, and thank you, Berkeley Middle East. Um, I've been asked to, to talk about my experience and share some of my learnings, and I'll try to do that. Um, and so the toughest part for me is always how to introduce myself. Uh, and, and the reason is because I sometimes do so much and I'm always driven by the passion of things. So right now, I, uh, I maybe the best way to, to describe myself is currently I run a few ventures. I also provide consultancy services for governments and institutions. Uh, in terms of where I am, right now I'm in Seattle, but I'm in between Abu Dhabi, where much of my team is based, and Addis Ababa, where our family business is. So, um, in terms of my professional career, I have made many mistakes, but the one thing that I've always done is I've always been, uh, I've, I've always, I've never shirked from risk and the prospect of adventure. And, and that I think defines who I am and what I want to do with my life. So to talk a little bit about myself, uh, it started when I was a journalist uh, from 1986 to 1990 in the UAE. I was fresh from uh, university in the US, idealistic, very naive, but very determined to be a good journalist. Uh, I joined Gulf News at a time when the industry was almost entirely dominated by men. Um, there were a few uh, women journalists, I remember, but many of them focused on some of the family beats like culture and uh, uh, you know, uh, family, that sort of thing. Uh, and at that time, I can see that I was the only Arab female in Abu Dhabi who specifically covered politics. Um, that did pose many challenges from very early in my career. And I think that is what helped me to prove myself and to chart my course as well. Uh, the experience, um, they, they, it, you know, the experience took me through some challenging times, but with, with that kind of, uh, uh, with that kind of situation, there, there are so many pluses and it came with a lot of privilege. I had the opportunity to cover many exciting stories and to meet so many leaders who left their mark on me. Uh, I met Sheikh Zayed, uh, Nelson Mandela, Wilfred Thesiger, Yasser Arafat, Kofi Annan, Prince Charles, Lady Di, Jacques Chirac, and many, many other leaders. Um, I was always mindful of the great responsibility that comes with being a journalist. It's the power of the words to shape minds and to also influence action. 
So that's why when I became bureau chief of Gulf News later on, uh, I introduced something called the neighborhood scheme. And the main idea was to induct new journalists. And my main focus was actually uh, women. I wanted to get more women into the profession. Uh, talking about journalism, you know, I, I get a lump in my throat sometimes because quality journalism today is under threat uh, in the face of propagandists and agenda seeking uh, seekers who manipulate digital platforms. So right now we need capable practitioners who can uphold the principles of journalism and, le and leaders who can protect it. And, and to be honest, I really believe women leaders can bring new perspectives on how to shape the future. Uh, I've always believed that women leaders can play a big role in transforming civilization. Um, most recently, we've seen women step, step up to the COVID challenge. We've seen presidents and prime ministers mitigate risks in the countries that they're leading. And, and we can't talk about women leaders without mentioning the formidable Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, a true champion of justice and equality, and she just passed. She passed away yesterday. Uh, I speak uh, a lot uh, at universities and government forums and sessions like this about the need for women to step uh, step up to leadership roles in government and the private sector. Uh, I remember recently, before coming to the states, uh, there was a, a session in in one of the universities, and for me. Uh, and it was women engineers. And I told them we really need women engineers, especially in, 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 in urban development, policy creation. Uh, because when you think about it, even when you think about urban development, uh, a woman can actually think about things that relate to, you know, we need spaces for kids, we need a park for families. Uh, we need, uh, you know, this kind of space to bring the community together. So I think women have a unique perspective and we need it to be reflected more in policies and in, uh, in uh, services as well. Uh, right now, we know that many institutions are being disrupted. We're going through very, very tough times. And I know a lot of people have lost their jobs and we expect many communities to fall on harder economic times. So I think it's my belief that there is no greater need for principled women leaders to come forward than right now. We need women to rebuild old blueprints, uh, to, to, to radicalize certain things that we took for granted, to innovate and to bring greater focus on compassion, on integrity, on integration, on diversity, on collaboration sharing, innovating. We need all of these things. We can't continue to do things the way they were. It, I think it is time for change. So uh, if I look back into, at my life, um, I've always found it very hard to resist the possibility of being part of positive change. And this may explain the trajectory of my life. So when I left Gulf News, I joined a very pioneering company called Thoreya as marketing director. It was an amazing learning curve, I have to say. Uh, and right now, if you're reading about Thoreya and Yasat in the news, they're taking things to the next level. So just watch the news. But at that time, for me as marketing director, um, I, I was responsible for campaigns over the a footprint of over 110 countries. And what we did was we provided satellite uh, connectivity. Um, the reason it m means so much to me but was because um, satellite te telecommunications covered remote communities. It empowered villages. It enabled businesses. It powered up schools and hospitals. And I was ex very excited to be part of a technological powerhouse whose business was founded on social good. So uh, I joined Brand Moxie, a leading communication agency in 2008. Eight, where I managed a team of designers, writers, strategists, and communicators. Uh, the business side of things was really cool, but for me, what I wanted to do was always link it to something bigger than myself. So I actively advocated the importance of, of corporate social responsibility to clients and partners. I taught myself all I could just so I could 
guide my clients to integrate CSR uh, projects. And I wanted to also be involved initiative to, in initiatives that added value to the community. So the one thing that I did, uh, 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 you know, right, uh, right from the start, was I started pro bono mentoring and coaching. And that was for a lot of the struggling entrepreneurs. Uh, and I taught things like branding and segmentation and funding and how to build a team and, and, and all of that good stuff. But, but I found that I was very limited by time. Uh, and I had to juggle, juggle so many other things. So that was why in 2009, which I call a watershed year uh, uh, in many ways, um, I set up uh, uh, Tamakkan. And the idea was to amplify my efforts to help SMEs. So I called my friends, uh, uh, professors in universities, my uh, competitors as well, uh, and, and other consultants, and I told them, let's come together to provide knowledge uh, in, in a very structured way. So it was monthly seminars, and my focus was entrepreneurship, intrapreneurship, leadership, and innovation. The one lesson that I learned was when you try to do something good um, for others, you will attract other people who will want to, 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 to share. So you will definitely attract amazing goodwill. So what happened in my case was uh, universities came forward, the, the US embassy, uh, institutions came to me and they offered speakers. Um, and, 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 and it was amazing. You know, I had uh, speakers from INSEAD and Boston University and uh, NYU and HCT and so many other uh, entities and consultants came as well. And institutions started offering their spaces free of charge. Uh, where I started, uh, my very first tamakkan was in a gym at Zaid University. Uh, you know, I, I told them I really need to do something, and they said, knock yourself out. They gave me the gym, and we started there, very bootstrapped and, and tight and exciting. And then we moved our monthly sessions to Mamura Auditorium, uh, which is a swanky space in, in the center of town, and it was in, in the middle of the, uh, you know, where the, a lot of the government uh, uh, entities are. We attract, so, so that enabled us to attract entrepreneurs, uh, uh, men and women who worked in those clusters who wanted to learn more about entrepreneurship, and they also wanted to apply some of these, uh, the fundamentals of entrepreneurship to their own uh, SBUs, their, 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 uh, the, the units that they were running in government. And occasionally we bumped into Sheikh Mohammed uh, because his office was there and he would just stop by and wave and, and, and show us that he supported us. Later on, uh, I decided to, to launch my own innovation space. Uh, I wanted to broaden uh, my workshop for SMEs. Uh, we had so much interest from internship, for internships from university students. And I also wanted to integrate more women-focused boot camps. So I, I, I took uh, a space at um, 2454, a large space, 320 square meters. And the space attracted amazing energy. We had artists, entrepreneurs, uh, small businesses. They came to network, to collaborate, to co-create. Co um, looking back, I realized when I was doing it at that time, I was really ahead of the curve. And the biggest challenge that I faced was lack of financial support to sustain something that was actually bigger than what I could uh, I could do myself. Uh, now, with the great awakening that is happening in the UAE, with the focus on entrepreneurship and startups and innovation, uh, that, that would have been the best time for me to, to, to do what I was doing at that time. Uh, and, but so, uh, two years ago, I decided to scale down and refocus my business. Uh, I decided to continue the Tamakan sessions because they, they, they were just generating so much um, good for others. And, and I would bump into uh, women entrepreneurs who would say, thank you for that session, you know, uh, five years ago in this place, because that really helped me set up my business or it inspired me. Or, you know, I would hear stories like that. So I just couldn't stop. 
So, uh, so I continue to hold semin Tamakan seminars and I collaborate with universities and government and institutional partners. And now, of course, because of COVID, COVID we've gone largely digital. The other reason I say 2009 was a, a watershed year for me is because I also launched Tempo. It's a monthly magazine. Uh, it's there, www.feelyourtempo.com. Uh, and it promote, and, and the reason that I, the, that I actually set it up was because I wanted to connect people. Um, I, you know, so Tempo promotes social enterprises, creativity, diversity, and community engagement. I wanted to bridge cultural understanding and I wanted to celebrate universal values that transcend race and gender. Uh, and I think the reason I did it links to the identities that I myself stra straddle. So I am uh, an Arab of Yemeni origin. I am uh, from Hadramaut. I am Ethiopian by birth. I'm American by nationalities. Uh, and, and most of my family, my extended family are Emiratis and many of them live across the world. Uh, I loved the diversity of Abu Dhabi. I love it, you know. But at that time, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, to bring the various ethnic groups together. So I had an editor, uh, editorial team uh, with contributors, contributors from all nationalities. And to, and to this day, uh, what we do at Tempo is we promote everyday heroes and we celebrate the human qualities that bind us together. Um, uh, another pivotal year for me, uh, I think, is uh, 2014. That was the year that I set up the space, the innovation space. Uh, but it was also the time that I launched two very important initiatives. One was the Smoothies, and it's uh, thesmoothies.com. Uh, and it's a platform that promotes emerging filmmakers through short film challenges. Uh, the Abu Dhabi Film Festival had just got canceled. Uh, and budding filmmakers were disappointed that there were no avenues for their creativity and uh, their, 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 their film talent. Uh, and as a big believer that great ideas are not powered by money, but by innovative thinking, I launched something that, that was certainly much smaller, but that still managed to deliver some impact. And that was this movie's film competition platform, which runs two, uh, three challenges every year, but this year because of COVID, we've been a little bit constrained. Um, so this movies encourages filmmakers to produce short films uh, about universal themes like gratitude and compassion and global causes like climate change. So I wanted to, to this, this platform to link to the social good aspect. Uh, and, I, and again, goodwill uh, comes in many forms. I partner with the, the Vox Cinemas, and I've worked very closely with the U.S. Embassy. Uh, but right now, where we are is we just need the kind of funding to take the platform to the next level. Uh, and so the other defining thing that I did in 2014 was the Women Achieve Charter, which I developed for Amcham. This is maybe what uh, Musa was talking about yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was running. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, remember, uh, we had quite an adventure. And with, <laughs> and, and with the Women Achieve Charter, uh, I, uh, it, it was because I was the chair of uh, the Women in Business group at that time, and I wanted to create something of impact. You know, usually with the committees, you run events and you do things like that. But I wanted something where um, we could hold someone accountable. And uh, so we uh, so we came up with a charter, and it has uh, seven ideals, uh, one, including uh, encouraging women to serve on boards, um, uh, giving an opportunity for women to be in senior positions, uh, training, uh, providing training, uh, and fair remuneration, equal remuneration, um, and and it was a great success. We had so many companies commit to it. We had uh, uh, over 70 companies signed it. Uh, most of the, signa the signatories actually were the large companies, many of them Fortune 500 companies. So it included Boeing, it included uh, Lockheed Martin, Cleveland Clinic, ExxonMobil, Parsons, Acom, FedEx, all of these 
huge companies. And, and the committed. Berkeley Middle East holding and Berkeley, also. <laughs> and Berkeley. Ber by the way, by the way, Musa was was one of the first uh, um, signers of this, uh, Musa. And if you Google uh, Women Achieve, you will see our pictures signing that document. So, guys, please search search Women Achieve. That's the best uh, picture um, I have ever seen. You know, this is one of yeah. my best collections so yeah. i know you're you you can speak and speak a lot and you have a lot of knowledge and everyone wants to gain but i want you to take a hold fresh up yourself sure. and i will join you in the uh, discussion panel which has interesting questions for you which everyone is excited to hear i'm very excited thank you very much and uh, i'm looking forward to have you again in the panel session okay